George Fant is the New York Jets left tackle for the 2022 season. To open training camp, Robert Sala mentioned to the media that Makai Becton would be moving to the right tackle spot after George Fant earned his position on the blind side in the 2021 season. So let's take a look at his All-22 together and I'll show you why this makes sense for George Fant and how he improved his play at the left tackle spot. Let's go. What's going on everybody? It's Luke here from Play Like a Jet and we're back today looking at George Fant who will be the left tackle for the New York Jets this season. Whether or not I agree with that decision, especially long term for Makai Becton's development, that's a video for another day. But I wanted to start with just looking at the All-22 and we have to begin with the Carolina Panthers game in week one. That's where Fant played primarily right tackle before the Becton injury where he got rolled up on Greg Van Roten and he really, really struggled in this game. And it was kind of a microcosm of his entire career at right tackle for the Jets. So let's break down the film together right now. Number 76, George Fant on the right hand side of your screen. He gets beaten very quickly off the snap in this quick pass set by Brian Burns on the right hand side of your screen. You can see that George Fant oversets with too much weight to his outside. He's off balance, gets fooled by this little outside jab step from uh, Brian Burns. Body weight going outside, gets beaten all ends up to the inside. Zach Wilson ends up evading the sack, gets the throw away, and almost drops an absolute dime to Corey Davis. But you can see it, struggling with his balance. Quick pass sets were actually an issue for George Fant all around, and this was a bad pressure that he allowed at right tackle. From the same game, at right tackle again, George Fant this time on the left-hand side of your screen going against Hassan Reddick. And this time he's beaten outside shoulder. This is a little run pass option. And I understand that he's expecting this to be a quick one step throw from Zach Wilson. You can see at the mesh point, he makes a decision to hold onto the ball. Number four, the linebacker does a really nice job getting in the throwing lane of the slant. But again, look at George Fant. This time, no, he's not beaten to the inside, but he's not in a particularly powerful position. He doesn't do enough to disrupt or displace the defensive end, in this case, Hassan Reddick. He's able to maintain his balance on the outside, turn the corner and gets to the sack. And Zach Wilson ends up fumbling the ball and recovering. But George Fant just didn't quite do enough for me in this quick pass set. I understand he's been aggressive. It's a one-step throw. Zach Wilson has to hold onto the football longer than he'd like. But I want to see George Fant do more. I want to see him displace and actually hold up this defensive end on the right side of the Jets defensive line. And this example is George Fant being beaten in a traditional pass set against Brian Burns, again at right tackle in week one. You can see that Brian Burns goes with the chop, the right arm swiping away the hands of George Fant. Again, Fant too far with his head and his shoulder pads in front of his feet. That's not a powerful position. He's off balance. And once Burns defeats the hands, he gets right around that corner quickly and just sits Zach Wilson down for another pressure. There were four or five pressures while George Fant was at right tackle and he truly struggled there. And even when he shifted to left, later in the game, you can see him just get destroyed here by Brian Burns on the spin move. Again, off balance, misses his punch, and Brian Burns has another hit on the quarterback. Thank goodness Zach Wilson got it away quickly. He really struggled in this game, and he really struggled at right tackle. But as the season got rolling and George Fant got more comfortable back at his natural left tackle position, his play started to improve dramatically, especially in pass protection, and realistically, he was one of the best 10 left tackles in the NFL last year. There were a couple of reps against the Miami Dolphins that really impressed me. This one against Jalen Phillips was great. It's the patience in his hands and the ability to keep working around the corner to keep Joe Flacco clean. So where does it start? It starts with patience of the hand and then the powerful strike. You can see Jalen Phillips, right hand side of your screen, number 15, go for this inside to outside Euro step footwork that we see from a guy like Jermaine Johnson to try and get more space around the corner. George Fant doesn't shoot his hands early. He's patient. And then when he does, he's in a compact powerful position, he strikes with tight hands to the chest and he gets displacement of Jalen Phillips. After that though, the rep's not over. Look at the way now he continues his foot movement around the corner, he's able to re-engage his hands and then work him all the way out of the play. So from start to finish, a great job being patient, don't shoot early, a powerful strike, re-engage those feet around the corners, get your hand placement and that's a beautiful rep, keeping Joe Flacco clean. From the same game at left tackle number 76, George Fant. What I like about this rep is that he mixes up his timing and his hand placement and he catches the defensive end off balance. You can see it's a traditional pass set, but look at the way he shoots his hands early. He expects him to be patient, does the defensive end, and in the end he pancakes him. 
great strength, great surprise and utilization of his leverage and length, and he gets him off balance because he mixes up his hand usage and his timing in pass protection. Again, even though he's at full extension on the punch, you can see that his shoulder pads and head aren't too far in front of his feet. He delivers a blow in a great spot, again, tight to the chest and the midline of the defensive end, underneath the chin, and look at the power, gets him to the ground, and finishes the play. Great work from George Fant developing at left tackle. And this one against the Jags is an example of great work rate, great vision and understanding of what the defensive line is trying to do, and then just effort and dog to finish the play. So right-hand side of your screen, you can see the Jaguars actually drop their right defensive end into a little zone here. So George Fant goes looking for work. Look at the wood he lays on number 95. Fantastic job being busy, delivering the blow, keeping Zach Wilson clean. But then it's tipped. Ball's in the air. Look at George Fant. Easily the guy furthest down the line of scrimmage and then delivers a monster blow to the linebacker and forces this ball out. From start to finish, a great job looking for work, being aggressive and then finishing this play and keeping the drive alive. Awesome from George Fant. And now jumping back to the Miami Dolphins games, a couple of other great reps that George Fant had at the left tackle spot, they just kept on jumping off the screen. Right hand side here, you can see how he does a fantastic job covering ground in his first two steps in a great position again against Jalen Phillips. Hands are pretty tight to the inside. Jalen Phillips, you can see him get that left hand free and he's trying to re-engage and get to the chest so he can win the leverage battle. George Fant does a great job though, controlling the hand and the wrist. Because he does that with his right hand, he enables himself to get more time to work those feet around the corner, to try and fight back to the inside, and again to push him around the corner. It's a great job traveling well and then having the wherewithal to control that wrist of Jalen Phillips to keep it off his chest and he wins the battle. And the last one here, talking about the positives from George Fant's pass pro at left tackle. I just thought this was a perfect rep. You can see how he's patient with his inside trail hand, make sure there's no pressure coming to the inside, and then look at him just finish with power around the corner. Again, look how compact he is. A great job not being off balance, being patient with his hands. Look how long it takes him to engage with the outside linebacker. He does a fantastic job. He waited as long as he possibly could. He's not getting his hand swiped. He utilizes though his hands at the perfect moment and then look at the power to finish around the corner, the leg drive and the ability to use that 310 pound frame. George Fant was just dominant at times, especially the back half of the year, especially in true pass sets. But there was an area that I actually thought Fant struggled in that maybe didn't show up on the stat sheet because it didn't necessarily result in too many sacks. But I think he got beaten quite a lot and caught off balance in these quick pass sets where he's looking to cover ground and be aggressive with his hands and shoot off the line of scrimmage. This is an example against the newest jet, Jacob Martin. He's on the left-hand side of the formation and your screen, number 76. I mentioned this in the Carolina Panthers game. I want you to look at the body weight of George Fant, how his head and outside leg, his body's shifting, and he gets beaten very easily to the inside with that little under um, rip move from Jacob Martin. He then goes straight through a poor effort from Ty Johnson, and it results in a sack. That's the second sack that I saw George Fant give up in 2021. But again, it comes on a quick pass set. It comes with too much body weight to the outside, a lack of control of his uh, discipline and his feet, and it results in a sack to Zach Wilson. Going back to that Dolphins game now, and Jalen Phillips, a guy we've talked about a few times, he gets beaten to the inside yet again on a quick pass set. You can see again, head, body weight, gets too far outside the frame, outside the, uh, the inside foot. Phillips identifies it, again, goes to that little swim to the inside, and again, very lucky not to be a sack. Joe Flacco gets rid of the football, a great catch along the boundary by Elijah Moore, but it's a quick pass set. It's getting beaten to the inside, and it's just not good enough from George Fant. And this one against the Patriots is slightly different. It's a quick pass set again, but he gets beaten to the outside. Matt Judon threatens his inside shoulder with a little jab with the left foot. Fant freezes his feet. He isn't able to turn his hips in time. And look at the position he gets in. He's almost in this right angle as he starts to shoot his hands. It's not a powerful position. Judon's able to, to defeat those hands really quickly, to bend around the corner and deliver the hit on Zach Wilson. I just think George Fant needs to be more disciplined and control his body movements better in quick pass sets. That was an issue for me on the 2021 tape. So I wanted to finish the video by looking at George Fant's battle against Marcus Davenport from the Saints because there's an argument to be made and one I agree with that he didn't really play a high caliber opposition in 2021. If you look at Beckton the year previous in his rookie season, I think he played both the Bosa brothers and Miles Garrett and he really took on the who's who of edge rushes. 
So how did he do against probably his toughest opponent of the season? It was a mixed bag. And it starts with, again, looking at the quick pass reps. You can see him left side of your screen, get body weight too far from the outside, open his hips and the gate to the inside, and Davenport goes almost untouched into Zach Wilson's lap. Again, this is where the stats lie a little bit about George Fant. I think he should have given up five or six or even a couple more sacks, a lot of them in the quick passing game, but he got a little lucky. Zach Wilson got the ball out quickly, but again, you need to do a better job keeping your balance and not showing him that inside. It's far too easy for Davenport. But he definitely developed, and he improved in this area, and here's an example of exactly that. Just a couple of reps later, George Fant does a better job keeping his positioning to the inside. He doesn't show him that inside gate. He makes him go to the outside. He's able to then shoot his hands and to displace Marcus Davenport. On top of that, he continues his feet around the corner, and he reestablishes his hands. It's a really nice rep. Would I like to see George Fant a little more balanced and not quite so out in front of his pads? Yeah, for sure, but still does a nice job impacting Davenport, forcing him off his pass rush plan, and then finishing the rep. It's a nice job, and it's definitely improvement in the quick passing game. This was almost a perfect rep. Again, George Fant's on the left-hand side of your screen. I like the way he travels and covers ground early. He wins the leverage battle. He has really tight hands. I like how compact he is at the point of attack. And then as Davenport starts to stack a move and try and rip to the outside, look at the core strength and the ability to talk and move his feet through the block. This is vicious. And he really does a great job, Davenport, being aggressive in this sustained block. But look at the strength, the grip strength, and the core strength of George Fant. This is a perfect rep. I loved everything about it. And this really showcased his entire skill set. Almost an identical rep from the same game against Davenport. This time he slightly loses at the end, but again you see him travel pretty well, make good ground, is compact at the point of attack, hands are tight, and he wins the leverage battle. He gets marched back a little bit though, and at the end you can see Davenport just break free to the inside and get the QB hit. Look, he wins for three seconds here, does George Fant. He does a good enough job. Zach Wilson couldn't find anyone open either. That's not his fault. The receivers did a poor job in this game, but George Fant does enough. Technically, he loses at the pressure, but I thought this was a pretty good rep from both of these talented young men. And the last rep I wanted to look at, George Fant just getting beaten to the inside of a spin move. Davenport does a nice job widening this rush, giving himself more of a laneway, and you can see that uh, Fant's a little bit too far to the outside with his head. His hands are too wide. That right hand, trail hand, goes around the back of the numbers. That allows Davenport to spin to the inside, and he lays what should have been a very easy sack. In the end, it's a QB hit, and Zach Wilson kind of escapes and ends up an incompletion and a throwaway. But again, shows him a little bit too much of the inside. You can see him literally lateral to the sideline, parallel to the sideline with his hips, and that allows Davenport to win to the inside. So that's the book on George Fant and his pass rushing reps from the 2021 season. You can see the contrast between him playing right tackle against the Panthers and how well he developed at left tackle. The games against the Dolphins, the Saints, and plenty of others along the way, he did a fantastic job. That's why Robert Sulla is playing him at left tackle, and we'll see if he can back it up in 2022.